Welcome to the Jet Experience. Today, as you can see that we're circling right now, uh, we were able to, to pick up and test drive a Model Y. I'll talk about it once we get inside the car, a little bit more about the process, how I got it, because it is uh, 102 degrees outside right now and uh, we are not hot hot-blooded people. So uh, we'll get some exterior shots, we'll look at it, and then we'll get inside uh, and we'll talk about the process. We'll do a test drive and we'll see what this can do. Uh, so join us on this experience. All right, powered lift gate. That's a nice uh, addition since the three doesn't have it. Uh, this reminds me a lot more of the inside of the S um, since it is a hatchback like the S is very giant cavity this is even deeper than the model s is with the uh the charger and then the uh the model y license plate frame they've got this does not go all the way through like in the model s but the model 3 only has the one cavity over here whereas it does not have this additional cavity so there's a lot of storage in here oh we, we're photo bomb we're video bombing by baby yoda hi baby yoda what's nice about this is i've I have done the camping mode in the S before, in the Model S, since there's a, a, a big lip, like a two inch lip, I have to fill it in with like boxes and then put the mattress in. This is perfectly flat. Uh, so even though I can't put it all, oh, ow. <laughs> even though I can't put it all down because Declan's in here, if I were to put a mattress in here, hey. I would absolutely fit because uh, the seats aren't even all the way back and there's lots of room in here I would be very happy with this back seat because then I could use under here for a lot of storage keep the blanket in there or whatever uh, and then put everything um, lay the seats down and then have all of that so let's figure out how to close it here we go it's a little round button super quiet way quieter than the Model S uh, lift gate is let's take a look at the front all right we've got the frunk popped gonna be really hot so pretty much like the model 3 it's a little bit deeper um, this is a little different I guess this is maybe just like to help make a seal yeah because there's this, a gasket right here around it so probably just for waterproofing it other than that it's pretty much the same although I noticed this doesn't have the, uh, the little pegs that flip down like in the model 3 to hang up your bags on so close this guy so sitting in here I'm, uh, you know, I'm seven feet tall, so joke. I'm uh, five and a half feet tall. I'm not sure how far back the seat is, but there's lots and lots of leg room back here, even for me. I've seen videos with six foot six people sitting in the back and they were, they had room. So this would be perfectly fine. And then the major difference on the top from the three is the three has the crossbar here and this has nothing. It's just a seamless, continuous glass which we noticed on the quick drive over to this little parking lot that um, it seems to be really, really warm in here, even with the air blasted. Uh, but it could just be in the process still of cooling down since it had been sitting for a while before we started driving it. Uh, so let's hop out and let's get the camera set up inside and we'll go take it for a drive. And off we go. I will drive at a regular speed down towards the end of the fence to make sure the camera stays before I do a uh, speed test on it. So besides that, I can tell I'm sitting higher inside. It generally feels like a three. And now since this is a dual motor versus the, the rear wheel S and three that we have, I'll pull it over and I'm at zero, puts it in hold because it's, it's on driving mode of hold. And here we go. Pretty good, it, it didn't feel quite as accelerative as the, uh, the dual motor S that I had as a loaner for one of the last times my S was in the shop, but definitely, definitely juicy on the, uh, <laughs> if one were to describe it that way, on the acceleration. We do know that this Y has full self-driving on it because uh, we were seeing uh, the traffic lights showing up on the screen on the drive over to where we are right now. So I'm interested to try that out since none of our cars have it. Uh, we both just have 
uh, so the S has the original autopilot and then the three as basic autopilot. So while we're work working our way toward uh, you know, freeway and uh, some more tests, um, basically we, we stumbled across some information about being able to schedule a touchless test drive for a Model Y. Uh, so we went, went on the website and uh, basically submitted a, a request. I got an email from one of the local uh, Tesla service centers near us, the one in Rancho Cucamonga, with dates and times that they were scheduling for. Took like one email back and forth to say, yep, this date and time works well. Uh, and then they sent us over basically like a, um, like a release form uh, to sign, as well as uh, confirming the date and time. And then we just showed up to the service center, checked in via the, the touch list by you know, scanning the QR code at the front. They came out. Um, I signed one more thing on an iPad, again, basically like a, uh, like a consent release that we're going to take care of the car while we're, while we're driving it. And they basically gave us the keys for an hour. So uh, not like a traditional car dealership where the dealer comes with us and they're driving with us. They just let us have it for an hour to go test drive. And this, uh, it's not exclusive to current Tesla drivers. If you didn't own a Tesla, you could do it as well. Um, I don't know if that's going to go on forever or not, but at least right now, I know we were able to do that. So we took advantage of it since we haven't driven a Y yet. Uh, and after this trip, the only uh, one besides the Roadster, obviously, that we haven't driven would be the, uh, the X. I haven't driven an X yet. So, so for the, the full self-driving, you can see right now, it knows there's three traffic lights right here. And there are, in fact, three lights um, up here, one on the left side and it just turned green as that turned green. So I'll do this. I'll come in here, I'll navigate back to the location so it'll always be updating my route to get there. And that way I'll have a, a general timeline. This of course wants me to make a left, doesn't even want me to get on the freeway, but of course I wanna try it on the freeway. So, uh, so we're gonna do that. Navigate on autopilot. All right, getting on the freeway. All right, got that guy locked on. And there, now we get to test the navigate on autopilot. We'll see if it exits. But I'm guarding the wheel because there's the K rails next to us because of the construction area. So just in case it tries to do anything wonky right now. Yep, took the exit quite nice. Does that guy clear the line? Not really. I'm gonna override it for a second. Oh, so I don't have to be on autopilot for it to stop at the traffic light. It just needs to be on cruise control. Okay, awesome. And now it actually, in the on the lanes on the screen, it's actually giving me rights and lefts for what each lane does, if it's straight or right or forward. I mean, or, or right or left. <laughs> I'm just saying things. So it, it, it could just be perception um, on my part because I jumped between the three and the S and I've been driving the S a little bit more lately and the, uh, the decelerative braking on, in that car is not as strong as the Model 3, um, but it feels like to me almost like the braking in the Y is even a little bit more aggressive than the three. Again, it could just be perception on my part. All in all, if, if I had to like sum this up in a comparison to a Model 3 in like just a few words, it feels like a beefier, stronger version of the 3. Um, it's, it's obviously, you know, built off the idea of the 3, um, but it just feels like a more secure car almost. Whereas when I'm driving the 3 around, even though it's still a 4,000 pound car, it almost feels like a toy to me. But that's also because I had the S well before I had the three, so I was used to driving the S. Um, but I, I mean, that's probably the same if you go from a larger car to any smaller car. Uh, it tends to feel toyish almost. As far as EVs go, I would say this is probably the, the most perfect EV, especially for families, because uh, it's, it's not as small as the three, which is limited on storage area. Still a lot of storage in it, but not really for your growing family, especially as they start to get into 
you know, different activities. The, the trunk's a decent size, but that's all you've got. Um, whereas we saw what it looks like in the back here. It, it's got tons of range on it. This is at about a third uh, battery life remaining, it looks like. And it tells me I have 122 miles and we'll switch it over to the percentage for a minute. Yeah, so 39%, so almost exactly a third left. Um, so this definitely is gonna get a decent amount of range. It's super comfortable. I already think the, the seats feel more comfortable than the three, but it would be deceptive because I'm pretty sure the, they're the exact same seats as the Model 3. Um, to the point where uh, we've seen in some other videos, because it's a sedan seat and not an SUV seat, they had to figure out how to get it higher. So they literally just built rails into the floor to sit the seat on top of, which is, which is pretty funny. Um, but it, it just, it, it could also be because I'm not so low, so I'm a little bit more in a seated position, like in a chair, as opposed to the legs more out in front of me. So maybe that, that plays a difference into it. Continuing on with why it's so perfect for the family, it's like, that was just going off because the, the, uh, the box truck in front of me was turning um, and that happens in the three a lot. So you, you can get rid of that by just turning off the audible alerts on the, uh, in the car so that way it doesn't constantly go off because I have that happen a lot. Uh, maybe it's just my driving style, but um, it's never actually gonna hit anything, but it thinks I'm going to, so it'll alert like that. Um, but compared to an X, this is probably at least half the price for a, a fraction of the price you could buy the Model Y, but this is just all around a, 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 like a, a genius car. If we didn't already have the two Teslas we had and it was between a three and a Y, we would probably go with a Y, but we already have the three and we've only had it for like a year and a half. Uh, and we're, we're quite content with it. If you checked out our video of Peterson Auto uh, Museum, uh, I'm, I'm excited for the Cybertruck, waiting for that. I highly doubt I'm gonna be able to test drive it before I buy it, maybe, we'll see. So that was the driving portion of our Model Y test drive. All in all, I thought it was a great car. Uh, I was at first a little uh, questionable about the looks of the Y. I'm still a little, it kinda just looks like a stretched out Model 3, but driving wise, of course, it felt like the Model 3. It was familiar, but like I said, it felt like a, um, a, a more sturdy version of it. Something I really like are the um, uh, the aero wheels. I'm not sure if they call it the same, but the aero wheels for the Model Y, which pop off. I like that design a lot more than the Model 3 wheels. Nothing wrong with the Model 3. I just like those better. But I would, uh, get, you know, given the option, I would definitely buy a Model Y. Uh, I fantastic car I thought between that and a Cybertruck I'm gonna go over the Cybertruck but a great car definitely an, a, a nice entry-level car for somebody looking to get into the Tesla family um, and wanting a slightly bigger car than a Model 3 so hope you like this test drive video if so make sure to give us a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel if you click the bell below you'll get uh, notifications of all of our videos as always, please remember, be kind and be real and join us on our next experience. So now that I'm back in the three um, driving it, not that I forgot, of course, how the three dro drove. Sporty is the best term I can come up with for the Model 3. But if I had to compare the Y um, to, say, a, another Tesla, since you know we're generally Tesla channel, is it's closer to an S than a Y a three as far as handling uh, would be my my you know biased assessment because um, as I was trying to explain it with the saying it was the beefier and and sturdier that that's it absorbs the um, the road feel a little better um, in the three I definitely noticed we feel like every little bump every little pebble almost whereas that it was a little bit smoother ride um, it could also be a combination of how high we're sitting above the road versus uh, this sedan where we're much closer to the road. Uh, once, I, once I was uh, dropped it off and I was talking to uh, the person from the sales department at the service center, he was also talking about how the seals um, on the Y have been upgraded to help reduce some of the road noise from outside. I know in, my, in the S, uh, we get a lot of road noise on it, partly also because we have the uh, retractable sunroof. So anything that can move is not gonna be perfectly sealed tight. So you're gonna get noise. Whereas in this one, 
Um, the roof isn't going to let in any noise because it's it's it doesn't open. And then, but your S is also a 2014, it, so it could be different. And now. my S is also 2014. We've got a red light real quick. So every Tesla, they're all half frames. There's no full frames. So you're going to run the risk of having more noise potentially with those because the window has to move up and down. And if the seal is not quite right, um, then it, you stand the potential of having more noise. Now we had the air blasting the whole time in the Y because of how hot it was. So hopefully uh, when we play it back, the, the air isn't too loud. We didn't particularly notice any road noise on the outside in hindsight. Um, so, so that's uh, that, that'd be nice. So, if we basically you were able to turn the air down and turn the music off, it'd probably be a really, really, really smooth and quiet ride. Obviously, no engine noise or anything, but just tire noise, uh, you know, internal noise from uh, from the road, and that's probably about it. Sell love.